George Stephanopoulos had a presidential candidate, Vivek Ramaswamy, on his program today. And first of all, there was a lot of bloviations. He had he asked some very specific questions, but Vivek continued to elaborate on every question with uh, things that made no sense, things that made him as Trumpier than Trump. That's what he used the platform for. In other words, this interview was used for Vivek to tell Trump supporters, I am going to be just like Trump, but you know what? More Trump-like, I will be Trumpier than Trump. That's what he wanted to show. And to some extent, George Stephanopoulos gave him too much latitude to go out there and preach a new Trumpian message. But you know what I did? I went ahead and cut all the bloviation and get down to his specific answers to show the kind of caricature that he is, to show that the lack of moral compass that he has. So I want you to listen to this and also listen to Senator Tim Kaine's response, which was concise and perfect. Check this out. We'll take it on the other side. Back in January 2021, you described President Trump's actions then as abhorrent. What exactly did you find abhorrent about his actions around January 6th? I would have handled that situation very differently than Trump did. But I do draw a distinction, George, between bad behavior and illegal behavior. Was it wrong for the president to create slates of phony electors? I think that there were a number of bad judgments that were made. Frankly, if I were the U.S. president, I would have never let it get to that place. You didn't answer my question. Was it wrong to create I would not slates have, of phony I, electors? The answer your question is no. I would not have nominated phony slates of electors. Was it wrong to encourage the mob to, to storm the Capitol? I disagree with that characterization. Is that what I would have done that day under those circumstances? No. Refusing to turn over classified information after he was met with a subpoena. Moving that uh, information, sharing it with others. You find nothing wrong with that behavior? There's a difference between a bad judgment and a crime. And you find his actions abhorrent around January 6th. You said he was wrong to take the classified information. You said you would not do that yourself. You still say you would vote for him for president. That's what I don't get. George, I said what every Republican nominee said to make it on that debate stage, that we will actually support the Republican nominee from our party. But what I've said is clear. If Donald Trump's the nominee, yes, I will support him. And if I'm the president, yes, I will pardon him. So your bottom line is that you would vote for a convicted felon because other people are voting for a convicted felon? My bottom line, George, is that I will vote for the person who I think is best positioned to move this country forward. Uh, Senator King, I just want to start out by getting your response to Mr. Ramaswamy and the other candidates, most of the other candidates on the Republican stage, all committed to vote for Donald Trump, even if he's a convicted in one of these felony trials. Well, George, what I just heard was the complete lack of a moral compass. Um, if you are unwilling to say that the behavior of Donald Trump trying to overturn the peaceful transfer of power is a disqualifier, if you pledge despite that to vote for him, if you pledge despite that to pardon him should you be elected. It shows that you don't have the moral compass that you need to be the leader of the greatest nation in the world. And sadly, Mr. Ramaswamy is not alone in lacking the compass. I think that was displayed pretty patently by many of the uh, GOP candidates on the debate stage. Tim Kaine nailed it. None of these guys, guys who are attempting to prosecute Biden as the Biden crime family when there is no evidence of Biden doing the things that they want to accuse him for. Look, you don't have to like Biden. You don't have to appreciate Biden. Look, I am not a fan of Biden, who I consider a neoliberal, but Biden, as far as I'm concerned, has done fairly well as a neoliberal could for the progressive uh, the progressive values that we want. So I give Biden to some extent to pass, but the idea that one would put Biden in the same class with Donald Trump is laughable from an intellectual point of view, from a moral point of view, or from any, any point of view. So uh, we ought to sit back and understand the cancer that the current Republican Party is on America. But I tell you, the thing that we should be more concerned about is that if we look at the, uh, the national polls today, that Donald Trump and, and uh, President Biden is polling at both 46% speaks poorly of our country. But I tell you better, it shows something that needs to be addressed. 
Unfortunately, Democrats have ceded the email space, the social media space, and all these spaces where calculated lies can be given to absolve people of the responsibility of doing what's right. And what we have in these different mediums or in this different media is we have people that are promoting it is okay to accept Trump for who he is because he will do well by us. So forget about his morality. Forget about his crimes. Forget about all these things because we are going to be okay with what he does as he stiffed the others. But, you know, take good care of us. Not realizing that the people who will do best for the country are those who would pass progressive policies that support people, support families, etc. But who is out there? With that message day in and day out and showing them specifically, you know, the right invest in their every type of their media. They invest in their local media. They invest in their churches. They invest in their alternate media. They invest in, invest in, their, in their bloggers and everything else. Our elitists, many of our elitist Democrats on the top. I'm not talking about rank and file Democrats now. I'm talking about the elitists who are the ones that many go to for advice. You don't see them going into the communities and investing in the organizations of the communities. You don't see them investing into the bloggers. You don't see them investing into the alternate media to put out information in every single domain. So you wonder why it is 4646 as far as the support for Biden and Trump is because again, the one side is nurturing their people in such a manner that they will they will vote for that which they know is evil, but they think will have no effect on their personal economies and their social economies. But the left side, the Democratic side, I shouldn't say the left side, the Democratic side have left the bloggers to their own device. They have left their alternative media to, the, the, uh, to, to their own device. And, you know, they will probably not start investing into these until it is too late. You want to understand what's going on in America, why we ha where we are, where, we at, where we're at? Again, look at, the, look at where investments are made and look at who really want to get results. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.